Then we got Tom Steyer. Yes, he is a super greenie and is a Democrat donor. He stashed money in the Caymans when he ran a hedge fund. And he's also invested very, very big in fossil fuels. Now he's a super greenie. So why is it that the Koch brothers are demonized in the media, called out on the Senate floor, and Tom Steyer gets a pass for his hypocrisy? Why don't we bring in Media Speak Strategies president, Nancy Fotenhauer. Nancy, it's been a long time since you've been with I us. Know. Far too long. Well, thank you for having me back. Uh, now, you know the Koch brothers. You, you mm -hmm. have been in the past a spokesperson for the Koch brothers. What do you make of this contradiction between the demonization of the Koch brothers and the glorification of Tom Steyer? <laughs> he, he totally gets away with it. Come on, speak, yeah. speak your mind. I've given you some <laughs> red meat. Go at it. Well, I have to say that it, it, this is beyond hypocrisy, even at the normal D.C. level. You have Harry Reid coming almost borderline unhinged on the Senate floor at the same time that he's happy to hosanna to Tom Steyer. And Tom Steyer has every right to spend his, the money he's earned the way he wants to. But the way he questions other people's morals and their motives, in my mind, means that he should be subject to some pretty tough questioning himself. And his moralizing seems to get out in front of his divestiture, whether it's carbon-based fuel or a pipeline that's directly in competition, for example, with Keystone. But what is it about America today that the demonization sticks to the Koch brothers, but the glorification sticks to Tom Steyer? What is it about America today that's causing this to happen? Why? Well, I think that there's, uh, there's so much of a drumbeat that is skeptical about the private sector that's coming from mainstream media, whereas the American people actually have a, a fairly resilient disdain for government, and that gives me a, a lot of hope. They still believe that innovation is going to come from the private sector rather than from government intervention. I think the Democrats are desperate to talk about anything other than the lousy economy, the immigration disaster, and the foreign policy, the really frightening things that are happen on, happening on the foreign policy front. Hold, hold on a second, Nancy. I've got the Wall Street Journal editorial board <laughs> sitting right with me. They, she wants Sorry. to get into this one. Go, Mary. Yeah, uh, Nancy, uh, another explanation. I'll just put it out there, and I want your reaction to it. It's because the media in this country is largely based in the urban centers of New York City mm -hmm. and Washington, very liberal, very pro-democratic centers. Does that have an impact on how these guys are covered? I, I think it must. And yet, and by the same token, I mean, think about the charitable contributions that David Koch has made in the city of New York, supporting the arts, or he's one of the largest, if not the largest, individual supporters of cancer research. So, I mean, they are really in a backbend. They are doing contortions to try to attack people who employ more than 50,000 Americans in good manufacturing jobs and whose principles are such that they will, they will fight subsidies even if it benefits their own industry. Uh, Nancy, I'm not giving away any secrets when I tell our audience that you were going to be the press secretary for John McCain had he won the presidential election. I think that's true. So I want you to give some advice to the press secretary for the president of the United States now, Mr. Obama. Would you have advised Mr. Obama to go to two fundraisers yesterday in the thick of these crises? I think that was a complete missed call. Um, I, and it said altogether the wrong signal. He's had a problem, though, with this all along. He just does not connect well with the average American. And I think they miss frequently the fact that actions and, and symbols matter. Mm -hmm. And when the rest of the country was, was praying for the people who had lost loved ones, out there trying to hawk yourself for $1,000 a plate probably wasn't the right thing for the commander in chief. You know, Nancy, You've been away from this program for far too long. <laughs> Just far too long. Come on back, please. <laughs> Happy to. Nancy Fodenauer, everyone. Thank you very much, Nancy. Appreciate it. Thank